which it sounds insane. I mean, I haven't even seen a sci-fi movie that does this, you know? Yeah, it's hard to believe that anything about this is real, but that's what Musk said about Mechazilla, his giant machine. There it is, tall, majestic, and from the pages of a science fiction novel. Despite having been ridiculed since the very beginning of the idea, Musk and his team are now proving step by step how shallow the previous judgments were. SpaceX Mechazilla is now more mind-blowing than you think. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. Elon Musk just shared exciting updates about the future of interplanetary travel on Thursday at the International Astronautical Congress in Azerbaijan. Besides Starship, the catching tower is proudly mentioned by Musk. We have a giant um, custom-designed tower with massive mechanical arms that will literally try to catch the booster and catch the ship. This tower involves a daring technique to capture the nearly 30-foot diameter, 9-meter, super-heavy booster using dual robotic arms on the Starship launch tower. As the booster descends back to its launch pad, the arms will close around the rocket to capture it in mid-air, then lower it back to the ground. The Starship vehicle itself, part upper stage and part spacecraft, is also designed for catches using the Mechazilla arms. The rocket's architecture is centered on making Starship rapidly reusable, with an operations mode more like airplanes than traditional rockets. Starship will return to Earth from orbit, requiring advanced heat shield technology and more sophisticated guidance, navigation and control than a returning booster like the Super Heavy or the first stage of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, which never reaches orbital velocity. I think there's a decent chance, depending on when our licenses are granted, that we will catch the booster within the next year or maybe less than a year, Musk said Thursday, perhaps hinting at more uncertainty about when the FAA might approve a Super Heavy booster to come back to land. And then, hopefully, if we get lucky, we might catch the ship towards the end of next year. Recovering the ship will take longer. We want to make sure that it comes in fully intact and lands in a precise location in the Pacific before we try to catch it at the launch site, he said. Hopefully, we might catch the ship towards the end of next year. Well, the story of the chopsticks began at the end of 2020 when the SpaceX team was discussing the landing legs being planned for Starship. Musk's guiding principle was rapid reusability, which he often declared was the holy grail for making humans a spacefaring civilization. In other words, rockets should be like airplanes. They should take off, land, and then take off again as soon as possible. The Falcon 9 had become the world's only rapidly reusable rocket. During 2020, Falcon boosters had landed safely 23 times, coming down upright on landing legs. The video feeds of the fiery yet gentle landing still made Musk leap from his chair. Nevertheless, he was not enamored with the landing legs being planned for Starship's booster. They added weight, thus cutting the size of the payloads the booster could lift. Why don't we try to use the tower to catch it? He asked. He was referring to the tower that holds the rocket on the launch pad. Musk had already come up with the idea of using that tower to stack the rocket. It had a set of arms that could pick up the first stage booster, place it on the launch mount, then pick up the second stage spacecraft, and place it atop the booster. Now he was suggesting that these arms could also be used to catch the booster when it returned to Earth. It was a wild idea and there was a lot of consternation in the room. If the booster comes back down to the tower and crashes into it, you can't launch the next rocket for a long time, Bill Riley says but we agreed to study different ways to do it. A few weeks later, just after Christmas 2020, the team gathered to brainstorm. Most engineers argued against trying to use the tower to catch the booster. The stacking arms were already dangerously complex. After more than an hour of argument, a consensus was forming to stick with the old idea of putting landing legs on the booster. But Stephen Harlow, the vehicle engineering director, kept arguing for the more audacious approach. We have this tower, so why not try to use it? After another hour of debate, Musk stepped in. Harlow, you're on board with this plan, he said, so why don't you be in charge of it? As soon as he made the decision, Musk switched into silly humor mode. 
He began laughing about the scene in The Karate Kid where the karate master, Mr. Miyagi, uses a pair of chopsticks to catch a fly. The tower arms, Musk said, would be called the chopsticks, and he dubbed the whole tower Mechazilla. He celebrated with a tweet, we're gonna try to catch the booster with the launch tower arm. Although Mechazilla has never caught any of its large flies to date, it has clearly demonstrated its usefulness in disassembling and reassembling the starship. You know, SpaceX has continuously stacked and destroyed Ship 25 and Booster 9 recently. The whole process only happened in about an hour. It's also impressive just how little uncontrolled movement was visible as Starship hung in the air hundreds of feet above the ground. Virtually no swaying was visible, meaning that the arms were doing their job of stabilizing the massive rockets in a situation where even a gentle breeze could make stacking Starship with a crane far too risky. Of course it's not over yet, this is how SpaceX's Mechazilla is more mind-blowing than you think. Elon Musk confirmed that, in the future, the process of returning the Super Heavy launch vehicle and the Starship spacecraft to Earth will take place exclusively with the help of Mechazilla. With the Mechazilla launch tower, Musk hopes to reduce the turnaround time to one hour so that the Starship can be capable of flying three times a day. This was stated by Musk many times. We're aiming for rapid reusability, which is why the booster is going to take off and then fly back to the launch tower and aspirationally land on the arms, which does sound insane. SpaceX has created a launch tower that permits it to stack and manipulate starships and super heavy boosters in far worse conditions than cranes can tolerate and catch both rocket stage out of mid-air. This giant pair of steel arms will enable SpaceX to attempt the next Starship's orbital test flights. But first, SpaceX needs FAA approval to do that. It's exciting to see the strides that SpaceX is making to ensure safe interplanetary travel in the near future. And SpaceX Mechazilla will be at the helm of making this future a reality. What else do you think is in store for SpaceX in terms of machinery that can aid in the future of space travel? Tell us your ideas in the comments section. And that just wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.